So, Merez, for me, was the key to unlocking this, I really like to think of it as like a line of inquiry. Questions that I started asking when I was 13 years old about what more this instrument could do and what my role as one of its players could be in, in shaping something in my, in my daydreams that was as powerful as what Varez wrote in 1936. And so I started asking the question, where will I be in 2036? When the piece turns 100, <laughs> um, where will I be? I know I'll be 58 years old, but where will the instrument be? Where will its performance practice be? How many extended techniques will have become a part of its vocabulary? And so I started asking these questions and I thought, you know, James Baldwin says that the purpose of art is to lay bare the questions that have been hidden by the answers. And so I thought it would be fun to do a project that was not so much about answering that question, but about creating an environment in which the questions could just keep flowing. And so I started a project called Density 2036, which is basically a question. What will the density of the 21st century be? If Density 21.5 by Edgar Varese was this pivotal moment that changed our instrument and changed our way of, of thinking about it, what will that piece or what will that combination of pieces be in the 21st century? And so I've committed myself to every year creating a new program, usually between 60 and 90 minutes of music for our beloved instrument, um, all the way up until 2036. And I've created about six hours of music so far in collaboration with, with composers. And by the end of the cycle in 2036, I suspect it'll be somewhere between 24 and 30 hours of, of new music. So I'm gonna share with you a few of my favorite moments that have to do with these percussive qualities and also with the question of how we respond to environments by some of my favorite composers. One of them is a wonderful young man named Dai Fujikura who grew up in Osaka, Japan and has lived in London for a long time. And he wrote a piece for me called Lila. Lila is a Sanskrit word that means play, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a more like free play, divine play, creative play, the play of a child's spirit. And it opens up like this, sort of harkens to the Varese, it takes it into, into new territory. So as you can see on the score, he gives you actually quite a bit of freedom to choose these different sounds, to combine these different rhythms within a sort of groove feel, and to use the syllables that he gives you. And you have a lot of freedom within the, the gestures in that box to make your own phrases, to, in a sense, create not just your own sentences, but tell your own stories with these, with these new techniques. And so the techniques themselves are really just, again, we'll take the flute away from the face, and everybody can go You know, any, any syllable in the alphabet is, you know, in any alphabet of any language is available to you as you start to play with this technique. You can also, just as we demonstrated with the pizzicato technique, you can add a, 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 a vowel, at least in the formation of your mouth or in your imagination, to those consonants. We get different sounds on the flute. Again, without the instrument. And bring the flute a little bit closer to your face. Make sure, as you're doing this, that you don't form a flute amateur. You don't need to. The flute actually responds. Watch. I'm going to blow. It responds this far from the face. It's so responsive. So if you go, you don't need to go like a good flutist. You can just go like you're telling your little brother to shut up. I'm doing this all on F because that's what Dai gives us. But again, the flute is extremely responsive to these sounds. So if you just finger a different note as you're playing around with this, you will hear that pitch. So play around with that. The piece is a lot of fun. And I'm going to show you a tiny little excerpt of a video 
that Dai made, unbeknownst to me, when we were talking about some of these techniques over Skype. People often ask, what's it like to work with a composer? Well, we just play around, we ask a lot of questions, and we come up with ideas, we try them on for size. Kind of like we're doing in this session. But so you don't have to take my word for it, I'm gonna play you a little excerpt of the conversation we had that led to Dai deciding to use this technique in the piece, and uh, you can see what he says in the video. So here's that. Like tongue rounds. Hi, Mina. And then okay. mm -hmm. you can, at any moment, introduce actual pitches to that mm -hmm. texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so, so those pitches should be any pitches? It can be any pitches, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can also alternate between, you know, <laughs> and then you add in some flutter, some, oh, yeah. you know, all that stuff. I see, I see. Felipe Lara was a Brazilian composer, grew up in Sao Paulo, and now lives in New York. And it's for the bass flute. I know this looks like I just pulled it out of, uh, you know, the plumbing in, in the kitchen or something. Um, the bass flute is such a beautiful instrument. It has, has the range of a cello and a viola and has the qualities of, you know, in many, in many ways, like a mezzo-soprano voice. Um, it's, it's a great joy to play. And all the things that we were talking about on the C flute as far as percussive sounds, translate to the bass flute, and in, in many ways they, they translate with, um, with even more power because the aperture, the hole here, is so much larger and, and, the, and the tube is so much larger. So, for instance, um, that little passage that I was just playing from Dai's piece, sounds very different and actually in some ways more powerful on this instrument. So, Felipe, wrote this piece, it's called Meditation and Calligraphy, and was dedicated to the Mongolian calligraphy artist named Mendoyo, whose practice was to meditate for long periods of time before he would take pen to paper and in 20 minutes create these absolutely astounding drawings. And so Felipe decided to uh, imitate this process and to meditate for a length of time and then give himself exactly 20 minutes to write a piece. And so this is what came out. It's called Meditation and Calligraphy for Solo Bass Flute.
again, there are lots of techniques to talk about, but we're going to pull out the, the percussive sounds. So the first one you hear is this. Basically, what he asks us to do is very forcefully, let's do this without the flute. And, and then to just as we did in Dai's piece, but with quite a lot more support, do that over the blowhole of the instrument. And again, don't make a flute embouchure. Just, just, just trust that the instrument's going to pick up this sound. And again, we can think about the difference between active and passive silence in it. Here's a really active silence. He also asks us to roll our R's. You can do it from the back of your throat or in the front in to the blowhole of the instrument. So it sounds like this. I have an Argentinian friend who, who calls this the perro rabioso. And my advice is, again, to just explore. Before you try to play this perfectly, just explore what it sounds to roll your R's into the instrument and play with different vowel sounds, different fingerings, you can have a lot of fun with it. And this instrument makes quite a lot of sound. So you also noticed that um, I was singing in this piece. So Felipe asks the flutist to, to, to sing. Um, and again, you can practice this without the instrument first. There's a glissando in there, which we can just do. Like that. But with the flute. Definitely practice this at home. The flute also, the bass flute in particular, allows us um, in a soprano voice, if, if, you're, if you're female, you use your, your natural voice. If you're a male, you use your, your natural falsetto. It enables us to explore close harmonies. So for instance, if I play, just pick a note that feels comfortable in your voice. For me, it's like a D, like a B and a D. And play in unison with the flute. You actually have to think more about the flute sound than you do about the voice sound. Think about focusing the flute sound the same way you would if you were just working on long tones. And then you can play with uh, different intervals. So I'm going to go down to a, to a minor third. seconds also sound really juicy. So play around with that in a range that feels comfortable for your voice and have fun. Think about Lila, the spirit of creative play and free play.